good morning i have come with the module 7.4 where we will learn the computation of income from self occupied house property you know that i told you there are two ways of computing the income for house property one will be let out and one will be self occupied so the computation is totally different so module 7.1 i have explained all the theoretical computing concepts and then i have given the tabular format for learning the let out house property self occupied house property how you will calculate debt annual value annual rental value expected rental income all that details i have given 7.2 i have explained how you calculate the net annual value 7.3 i have explained the computation of income from let out house property now we are learning the computation of income from self occupied house property this is very good tax saving for everyone so always i will advise my students when they will take up a job you have to save some money that will be your advance money or your first installment some some deposit you have to give usually banks will give only 85% loan based on your salary 15% you have to make your own investment so always i will advise my students because you save this money 15% then whenever you can afford that you buy at least start with one one bedroom because this is one method of escaping tax payment this i have been following right from the time i started working so first we bought a new first one bedroom flat then this we sold that and we got the capital gain that we invested in a two bedroom that we sold that money we invested in a three bedroom like that we are saving the money and we are not paying tax also so salary income see the advantage is that interest for self occupied house property housing loan interest we can claim up to 2 lakhs if you are taking the loan after 99 if you are taking a loan before 99 1499 is very very important in the first module also i have explained that so if you are taking a loan before 1499 the maximum limit is only 30000 whereas if you are taking loan after 1499 because most of the housing the housing loans will be 99 after 99 because why now we are talking about 2020 so many years now so those who took a loan earlier they would have completed that repayment and now they will be or they may have switched to new loan because of this provision they can take advantage so if my salary if its uh, gross salary is 20 lakhs i get claim 2 lakhs as interest housing loan interest repayment that meaning my taxable income will reduce from 20 lakhs minus 2 lakhs it will come to 8 lakhs 18 lakhs so that is a good thing i can save my tax i can reduce my tax liability so this i am following that and i always advise my students also to follow this principle this because it's very good you can reduce your tax liability to a great extent and everybody will try to spread this housing loan repayment till the retirement because till then we can claim the tax exemption so this is good thing and when you are learning house uh, self occupied house property when you are doing the computation of house property your first thing you have to see the whether it's let out or self occupied because computation is different so that is why i have included one separate schedule for or separate module for computing income from let out house property now i am doing one for income from self occupied house property self occupied house property i am doing only one problem but the module where we are doing the complete salary computation i have worked out 10 problems so that is very good because all the adjustments i am covering see self occupied house property computation is very simple up to net annual value we will take it as nil so in the problem annual rental value will be there expected rental value standard rent rent received rent receivable all these details will be there and so many expenses they will claim fire insurance premium ground rent municipal taxes all that so nothing is allowed net annual value we are taking it as nil now standard deduction you know that for let out house property we are giving 30% of net annual value that is flat we will whatever expenses they claim we will not consider whether they claim the expenses or not we will give that 30% tax exemption but here you have to remember that we are not allowing that also municipal taxes also we are not allowing only one deduction we can claim is interest on loan taken for construction of the house property one thing you have to remember i have explained in the tabular form also in the first module you have to remember that if you if you are taking a loan after 1499 if it's for repairs maximum limit is 30000 if it's for purchase construction uh, anything like that 
reconstruction, anything like that. Except other than repairs, the maximum amount they can claim is 2 lakhs. So that is very good advantage, not only for tax saving, but also you can live in your own house. That is the most advantageous thing because you don't have to worry. Sometimes tenants in Bangalore and all the problem, uh, landlords can create a lot of problems. They will immediately come and tell somebody will tell say that uh, somebody is offering higher rent either you increase the rent or you vacate the house so these problems all we can avoid if you have our own house property so that is what you all should aim for when you start working so this is the thing i want to explain and with one problem this will be the smallest module what we are going to learn because this computation is very simple and when i am doing the pro full salary problems i am in, i am working on 10 problems just to include all the adjustments possible this is just to tell that this computation is different from the let out house property only one problem we are going to do is compute the income from self occupied house property of mr a municipal rental value 120000 fair rental value 180000 municipal taxes 12000 ground rent 5000 interest on loan taken for construction of this house property compute income from self occupied house property see i told you we are taking net annual value as nil. You know that how you arrive at net annual value. Municipal rental value, fair rental value, standard rent, rent receivable. All this we will calculate, we will consider and we will calculate the expected rental value. From that we will take the annual rental value. From there we will reduce uh, municipal taxes and we will reduce at the and we will get at the net annual value. Here all the steps you can avoid. Directly we are going to net annual value that is nil. Then ground rent we will not allow. Standard deduction also we are not allowing. So in the computation of self-occupied house property, I have to remember that net annual value will be nil and standard deduction we will not allow. Then you have to remember the dates. If the loan is taken before 1499, whatever, if it's for purchase, construction, reconstruction, anything like that, maximum amount they can claim is only 30,000. But if the loan is taken after 1499, if it's for repairs, Maximum amount is 30,000. If it's for anything else, purchase, construction, reconstruction, anything like that, the interest they can claim up to 2 lakhs. And principal, whatever we are claiming for this housing loan repayment, that can go to section 80C also. We have not learned that. We will learn that in detail. So that is the thing you have to remember. So this is very, very important. So this problem, if you do the problem, So when we are doing this problem, table showing the computation of self-occupied house property. Net annual value is nil. So whatever municipal rental value, fair rental value, everything we are avoiding. Less deduction under section 24. Standard deduction also we are not allowing. Interest on loan taken for construction of house property is 1 lakh. So loss from self-occupied house property is 1 lakh. So this is the calculation. So this is what we are going to do. So this will be a loss from self-occupied house property. Now. So this is the computation I want to show you. So it is different from let out house property. Net annual value will be nil. Municipal taxes and all we will not allow because it will be there in the question just to confuse the students. Standard deduction also you have to remember. It will be 30% we are not allowing. Only for let out house property it's allowed. Then interest on loan taken for construction of house property. That is the only thing we will allow. That will come as a loss. So if it's in the case of salaried people, or in the case of business people, this loss can be adjusted. So here you have to remember that salary. I told you my salary, if you are taking it as 20 lakhs as my salary. Then I can claim up to 2 lakhs housing loan interest. So directly 2 lakhs I will save every year. So 18 lakhs only will be my tax liability. So that's a good saving. Hope this computation is clear to you. The distinction between let out house property and self-occupied house property. This is very important. Because when you are doing the salary problems, you have to do problems. Most of the cases, four units will be there. Two units will be there. One will be let out and one will be self-occupied. So you should remember, sometimes they will ask you, what is the best decision a person can take? Whether this house property should be claimed as self-occupied or let out. When a person is having two house properties. So all these questions we have, I have included in mod the module. That is what I am going to explain next. That is where we are explaining the computation of full salary problems. So this is just to show you the difference between computation of let out house property and the self-occupied house property. So wishing you all the best, happy learning and we will see with the next module.